joining us this morning. Puyong Hao, Chief Investment Officer for Asia UBS Wealth Management, which oversees $204 billion right here in Asia, joins us on the program. Uh, Yong Hao, you know, let's start uh, also with that shock move, because I, I was telling you about it, how uh, this came basically during the early evening here in the Asia Pacific. You saw markets going wild. People were just talking about the Swiss franc. Uh, what was your initial reaction, and how has it played out, really? Well, I think the initial rea reaction, obviously, it's uh, slightly positive because Swiss economy, particularly export industry, is hurting by the stronger Swiss franc. Mm -hmm. Now, by pegging the Swiss franc to the euro, obviously, it's going to give some support to the Swiss export industry. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a peg yeah. to the euro. It's not going to move beyond 120 if the Swiss Central Bank can help it, right? Exactly. So, and that, what about the strength we're seeing in Asia-Pacific? currency today. Is that in any reaction to the Swiss franc well, move? We, we didn't see much move because in Asia it's still dollar zone. Yeah. <laughs> the, the benchmark currency is still U.S. dollar or maybe a certain degree of euro. All right. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, in terms of currency, do you still think the best bet includes the same dollar, the ringgit and the Thai baht? Is that right? And the renminbi as well. And the renminbi. I think uh, in uh, Asia. <laughs> Look, I mean, the Asia's inflation is not going to go away easily, yeah. right? Yesterday, we just see Indonesia's inflation rebounded. India's inflation remained very high. China's inflation may be going to peak, but it's not going to go down easily. Mm -hmm. So as a consequence, probably Asia have to allow the currency appreciate more to control the inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you, were, you say you were neutral now on shares. I think you uh, brought your expectations lower because of the economic indicators that we're seeing, which is uh, coming in pretty fairly poorly. Yeah. Uh, would you say you would make more money this year in currencies or in stocks? Well, I mean, the, this year the investment strategy is uh, is quite difficult. I mean, in a way, it's a uh, it's a quite tough call yeah, with which uh, which market to go for. At the beginning of the year, we thought that the economic recovery is normal, inflation is coming up, so naturally you have to go to commodity equities. But the story turns out turns the way other way around. Mm -hmm. We see the recession risk. We see the eurozone are going to have a potentially financial crisis. Yeah. That's why equity underperformed. Right. But still, in the diversified basis, we see corporate bond outperformed, emerging market government bond outperformed, yeah. uh -huh. we see gold outperformed. So fixed income, including, <laughs> fixed income, including currencies and currency, bonds, bonds, is outperforming equities so far for this exactly. year. But, gold, yeah, right? right. We'll talk about gold. This, that is considered <laughs> currency. But at the end of this year, would you say the best bet would be better in fixed income rather than in equities? I think today's environment yeah. is more about how to protect your wealth right. rather than try to spot the sort of the upside. Right, trying to make money. <laughs> exactly. You just want to protect what you have. Um, exactly. What about gold? Because uh, this is this right? Your predictions is for twenty two hundred dollars yes. an ounce yes. in yeah. the next when? Well, next three months. The next three months. Yeah. Wow. What's going to drive gold higher? Well, it's the global economic uncertainties. If let's say eurozone financial crisis is deteriorating. And the QE3 is going to be launched by the Fed. Then obviously you're going to see the gold price going to rise further. Mm -hmm. But I always told our clients, say gold is the insurance. You wish nothing yeah, to happen insurance policy, yeah. because it's insurance. In the case gold price coming down, you don't have to be so disappointed. Mm -hmm. The reason is because other asset market will increase much more. If the gold price coming down, it just means the economic uncertainty mm -hmm. reduce which means equities or normal like corporate bonds or real estate will outperform. Right, okay. So you're neutral on shares, but we're seeing a rebound today, right? After two uh, straight losing uh, sessions here in the Asia Pacific. Have we turned a corner? Have we hit bottom? I just want to make sure of that. Well, uh, no one knows. Well, it was not the way we hit the bottom. <laughs> well, some people are ma willing to make calls. <laughs> well, yes, I think uh, you can based on the variation wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, variation looks attractive. But nobody knows whether it's the bottom because mm -hmm. it's kind of the, depends on the economic development. What we say is that we should increase the defensive positions mm -hmm. within the equity square space. Maybe the consumers, telecoms, utility, yeah. all those are defensive sectors. Yeah, the so big yield in yeah, place, yield, right? You go for the yield, you mm -hmm. for the, go for the growth, which yeah. emerging markets still have some growth. Some you go growth. for the quality, right? Okay. This is the right time to pick up some quality stocks. And Yonghao, what do you think is going on in the yen here? These are some pretty fast moves. Like it just keeps uh, ticking uh, stronger and stronger with every minute. 
Well, I mean, uh, look at the dollar. I think it's the problem with the dollar. Dollar keep weakening. I mean, look at the uh, Fed, right? Keep supplying new dollars. Mm -hmm. As a consequence, we see the Asian currency continue to appreciate, including yen. Even the Japanese economy in a, such a bad situation, mm -hmm. they need to desperate to the weakening yen. But so far, seems the market believe that the yen should uh, go high. Right. Another aspect to look at the yen is the risk on and the risk off. Mm -hmm. Normally, in the risk uh, of trade, people tend to go back, repatriate the money back to the Japan. So that's why yen were benefiting from this kind of repatriation flows. But, but these news came after the Bank of Japan meeting that wrapped up. I mean, was there anything said there? I don't believe there was anything new that we heard. Well, I mean, uh, if you look across the whole, look at the, across the whole board, it seems the Asian currency has been appreciating yesterday uh -huh. after the SNB made such a move, right? right. Dollar also appreciated that against mm -hmm. Swiss, Swiss, and then as a consequence, Asian currency also appreciated it right. against the dollar. The, the currency of choice for you, though, is gold, isn't it? Well, gold is one of the choices. We call gold as an insurance to ensure mm -hmm. the bad time. Right, if the right now it's pretty bad because everyone's bad. buying gold. Yeah, well, I mean, we never say that you should uh, put all your money into gold. It's kind of insurance. So you must have raised your target to 2,200. But honestly speaking, the target is just a direction, right? And nobody knows right. exactly how much level you can achieve. The direction is up. We expect to go up because the global uncertainty seems rising. I mean, look at Europe, the debt crisis is worsening. In the U.S., economic recession is deteriorating. So in a situation like this, we probably expect people putting more sort of the safe hedging into gold. Okay, Angie, you've been covering the markets uh, all, all morning long. It's a day of recovery. You've been talking about losses, really, for the uh, first two days of this week. Uh, what do you want to ask, Mr. Yonghao? You know, it's interesting because in terms of just investor sentiment and how much emotion really kind of comes into play in terms of Ackerman saying this week, the new normal uncertainty and volatility. And we have uh, the uh, Wen Qishan in uh, London uh, starting his three-day visit. Yeah. And he's... And, you know, a lot of the talk there is how does Britain, uh, you know, win Chinese business to try to grow its economy? Meanwhile, this, you know, Eurozone is, is one of China's, you know, big markets as well. And so you see this kind of banding back and forth. Who's going to drive whose growth here? Well, I, yesterday I just uh, published an article on the Financial Times talking about the emerging market probably is going to be a safe haven right now because if you look at the fiscal, financial, we are in a relatively bad shape. If you look at the economic growth potential, we are in a bad shape. Countries like India, China, Indonesia, mm -hmm. at least we have some domestic engines to yeah. grow, right? If you are coming from Chicago or London or New York or Zurich, you can see the shops flooded by this kind of flooded by those Chinese tourists, mm -hmm. basically by those luxury watches or whatever yeah. stuff, jewelries, right? Right. Okay, so what about the comparisons in 1930s uh, depression? We heard that yeah. from Niall Ferguson, the Harvard University professor, and also, uh, you know, Ackerman, as uh, our lovely lady here mentioned, you know, it looks like 2008. Is that true? Well, there is a common similarities. I think as a bubble being bursted, a huge deleveraging going on. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the question people are always talking about is the double dip. In my view, it could be a single dip because the dip has dip, continued, right? extended from U.S. to the Europe. This kind of deleveraging process normally takes about four and a half years. Yeah. This time, because government stepped in, China launched the four trillion stimulus, U.S. did the quantitative easing. So it looked like that we, we were a bit lucky in terms of holding this kind of the arresting, this kind of deleveraging process or recession. But it turns out to be that it's more difficult than we thought. Mm -hmm. the, the, the sort of deflationary force continued in so the West, in Europe. Now, you're expecting QE3 to come out from the Fed, but uh, what about Obama? Are you closely monitoring his speech? Because uh, the market is all abuzz about this $300 billion that they're going uh, to try to stimulate jobs growth in the U.S. I think his hands are tied up. <laughs> Look at the option he has. He may be going to help some fix some school, which is creating some job for construction workers. Maybe he's going to extend some of the mortgages mm -hmm. for the Ask Bank to extend that. 
and then maybe he going to extend one more year of the payroll tax. Yeah, right. The issue is that if the corporate don't have confidence to invest to hire people, and when people don't have a job, they're not going to spend, right? That's the key issue. And they're going to right now, the, the confidence. Economy. Yeah. Okay. Yo Hao, thanks for dropping by. Good to see you. Yo Hao of Thank UBS you. Wealth Management.